This week we head to the Golden Isles of Georgia for an inshore hook and knife adventure. We set out on the marshes of Glen with the great captain and chef Dave Snyder, who sets me up with the fish and turns to Big Phil with the fillets. We also enjoy a Badia Spices Chef Challenge with the great Adam Hayes and flyboard from the blue water to the bright blue skies of sunny Fort Lauderdale. Anglers and Appetites is coming right up. I do the catching, and Phil does the cooking. I can be taught. Well, sort of. From mountain streams to deep blue seas and everything in between. Here we go. Hey! Some fish for food, others for profit, and then there's Chef Dave Snyder. Chef Dave lives for the thrill of the catch and more so the anticipation of what could be stalking a well-baited hook. After years of fishing the Golden Isles with seasoned charter captains, the chef graduated to captain and hook and knife was born. Dave takes you to the fish, you catch it, then he cooks it using his highly acclaimed culinary skills. We started out early in the marshes of Glen County with a goal of beating the sun and the birds to the sea trout. We're gonna walk the dog. You hit out there? Mm-hmm. Let's sit for a second. You kind of twitch along the top. Not only is it swimming, it's hurt. But you can see it's kind of going in a zigzag, like yeah, left yeah. to right. Oh, walking the dog. See, that there was white right there. Mm -hmm, you see that? Mm-hmm. Uh, come on now. Captain Dave said the birds can't see yet, so the trout feel safe coming to the top. He's got him, he's got him. Here you go, Dave. Fish on. It's the right species. I don't know if he's a keeper. Hey, we got one, we got one. Top water trout. We need 13. He's maybe about 11. But you know, he's got that, uh, that gorgeous yellow mouth and the teeth. So how about that? Nice catch, Dave. All right. We got to start. My turn to get wet. There's a baby flounder. A little flounder. The eyes already rotated on him. Ah! Uh, we got a couple. All right, all right. From trout to another tasty Golden Isles treasure, and this is where I decided to step up my game. All right. What all species right. we have? That might be a flounder. Yeah. It felt exact. Yeah, that is a yep, flounder. We got one. All right, here we go. Bring it right to you. Ha -ha! Me. Woo! You flounder. got dinner, Dave. You got dinner. Yeah. And then you saw them flip over. They're harder to hold. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time I've ever caught a fish. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because sometimes the meat's a different color also. The meat on this side sometimes has a little red tint to it. Okay. Maybe a little orange. And then generally speaking, the flesh on this side is a little bit whiter on top. Don't you dare flip out of the boat. I don't know. And he's, he's, big enough for, he's big enough to keep, so. Nice. Yeah, yeah feel the meat. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning. OK. We're going to make ceviche back with Phil at like, eh, what, about 3 or 4 o'clock? Sounds good. We're going to be eating fish that's only 8 hours old. Oh, I love it. All right, so we got two different species. And you know, the inshore slam, all he needs a redfish. As I took a break back on shore, Captain Dave took the flounder and morphed into Chef Dave. And the great Chef Dave happens to be the founder of the St. Simons Island dynamic restaurant duo of Halyards and Tremici, where the hook and knife promise was delivered to the appetite. All right, Dave, so what's over in the cooler? Well, these are a few other species. A few okay. other, but I'll tell you what, here's what we worked with today. Right. Here's one of the crabs, blue crabs. A lot of blue crabs around here. This is a flounder that we caught this morning. Nice flounder. But a couple other species, which are great for chefs and restaurants to work with. We've got some trigger fish around here. This is an American red snapper, probably America's favorite fish. Okay. Um, in the Gulf of Mexico, you're allowed to harvest them. In the Atlantic, we can't right now. But I just wanted to show you the species. Um, this is one of the snappers we get in the Atlantic. All right, so look yeah. here. We got a little quick recipe we're going to throw down on. What you got? Well, because the fish is so fresh, I'm going to make some ceviche tonight. Well, we've got some chopped up black sea bass. We're adding some lime juice. A little bit of salt and pepper. And what's going to happen is the acid is going to actually cook 
the protein. So versus heat, we're using uh, lime juice. We're gonna let that sit in the lime juice. It's gonna take maybe about five, six minutes, not that much. A little bit of cilantro, we've got some tomatoes, we've got some red onions, a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, how spicy do you want? Oh, you know I want it spicy. Exactly. Some like it hot, I like it hotter. And so this is a serrano chili pepper. These come from a farm over in Brantley County, which is about 40 miles that way. You okay. can see that the, um, the flesh of the meat is starting to turn even more and more white and less and less translucent. Okay. That's the protein starting to cook in the lime juice. That's when you start to know that the fish is going to be cooked. But that probably needs about five or ten more minutes. We're looking back at the ceviche and you can see that it's now very opaque white. The translucency is gone. It's ready to try it. So why don't you grab a spoon. Thank you. See if you like it. I'll just get a small helping. Small helping? I'm going to take one bigger than that. Come on, what do you think? Oh, yeah. And you know what jumps out? The jalapeno pepper. Yeah, it's nice and hot. Try this if we stay here about another minute We're going and eat all this, there's nothing else for the table. And what's beautiful about this is it's so easy. Lime Quit. juice, a couple vegetables, salt and pepper. That's it. Yeah. Well, a lot of times when people think about a chef, he got to have this magic super recipe and I can't do it. And that's what I try to just help people see is that no matter whether you're doing it or just me, the simple guy who likes to cook, sure. anybody can be as good as they want to be. It's a little bit of practice. It's a whole lot of passion. Okay, well, I got plenty of passion because I'm the appetite. And when the appetite's ready to eat, I'm ready to eat, baby. All right. <laughs> It's your chill time. Let's go. Badia Spices is the soul of cooking. Established in 1967 by Jose Badia, this high quality spice company is still a family business under the leadership of Joseph Pepe Badia. Badia Spices delivers more than 350 different products, including an amazing line of organic products to 90 countries around the world. Badia Spices the creators of the original Complete Seasoning, available at your local retailer. Hi, I'm John Ernst, your hometown lawyer. If you have a legal issue, give me a call. You'll reach me right here. And remember, 10% of my fee goes to the charity of your choice. If you need representation, call your hometown lawyer, John Ernst. Call 678-962-7929 or visit ernstlegal.com. He'll take care of your legal needs so you can focus on what matters. That looks like a shake, doesn't it? Look at it. the Golden Isles down to the land of the sun, hello sunny Fort Lauderdale. Hello sunny. In Pompano Beach you can learn to fly and the picturesque Hillsboro Inlet serves as a perfect backdrop when in flight. And in order to launch, Phil and I track down Flyboard South Florida's Jeff Terode and his companion, a man soon to be known as Lavender Dave. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to fly today, right? Yes, you're going to defy gravity. And it looks like these are cement boots. Are you going to put me in and I'm going to sink? <laughs> sink right to the bottom, right? <laughs> Actually not, David. If you look at the bottom of these, these red cones on the bottom, mm -hmm. it's flotation devices. So you cannot sink with this particular apparatus. Check. I ended up getting involved with it. I flew with it for the first time, had an unbelievable time, and turned into a business. 
I love the yeah. term fly. Yeah. And that is literally what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I'm not no. the superhero controlling it. It's actually extremely safe because if you have an operator on the ski that controls your height, controls your power, if you get into trouble, they can let the gas off and you just drop or they can let you down easily. Kind of do circles around the jet ski, do maneuvers, 360s, you can do all sorts of things with it. You have a blast with it. Now, people do fly, but they also oh, yeah. go underwater like a torpedo. Tell me about that. We call that the dolphin maneuver. It's a very simple maneuver because it's just changing the accent of the boots as they come in and out of the water. And the water here in Greater Fort Lauderdale is so clear. Yeah, but just for aesthetic effects, it's unbelievable. Do you think it could lift Phil? Uh, I'm sure it can lift Phil. You're sure it can lift Phil? Those I'm are positive. big words. Those are big words, and I, I'm going to back them up. Now, I had been flying before, but Bill was trying to fit his size 15s into the flyboard boots for his attempt at first flight. And that's when Dave stepped up to the plate with his luscious lavender foot lap. It's all looped up in here. So to get Phil in, what are you doing here? Oh, that's soap. It's lavender soap is going to help Phil. Sham, sham a meal. Oh, Dave, this is this is beautiful. The the scent, the aroma coming from Dave is intoxicating. <laughs> oh, and Phil's feet are going to smell like this. <laughs> We feel good. We <laughs> fell a few times. It's fun. You're falling in the water. You're exactly. coached on how to fall. Of course, Dave said I actually hurt the water. Yeah, the water was. You did. Us, like you did. We, we came to the conclusion that if pain had a sound, that was it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how much fun can you have? Check them out. <laughs> Back north to the Golden Isles, where Captain Dave aimed to deliver an area favorite, the high-flying tarpon. Tarpon time. Tarpon time. Here's what we're going for here. These are the pogies. This is the tarpon bait. We've got some mullet on the bottom. Mm -hmm. We've got a pogie on the bottom. Okay. Back there on that yellow float, we've got a blue crab, live blue crab that we're floating. And we're going to put a pogie on this one as well. And we're going to stick that out. So we'll kind of see which bait the tarpon are in the mood for. We've got some action over on this rod. Okay. We're probably going to catch some sharks here. We're probably going to get some stingrays, all those bottom feeders. Yeah. All right, here. Fish Take on. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Oh. Last one. You handed me the pole. Oh. You weren't very big. That's right. No, I mean, he was small. But he was. Nice right, species. Was... Uh, yeah, it's nice. Oh. Yeah. Uh, straight out, straight at the back. How big is he? Are we chasing him? He's bigger than me. Uh, yeah, he's not done. How's that sandwich? Give that sandwich. Get that fish. He's diving. I want you to jump out for us. But he hasn't jumped. I wonder if we got a shark. He's a diver. Let's see what kind of species. I'm thinking got a shark. Oh, no, no. Broke the line. Now let's see if it's chased. If it's cut, uh, it's a shark. Yeah, it's that's just cut. Got it. It's a shark. I saw the glimpse. Whew. For all you know, that was a tarp. This is what I was thinking about when I was fighting that shark. Or tarpon. This is <laughs> kind of what I was talking about. It's this sandwich. You have a chef-made sandwich from one of the best chefs here in the southeast. That is part of what we do at Hook and Knife. Oh. I mean, this changes. This is a oh. game changer. Gorgonzola cheese. Mm -hmm. You got some tomato. You got the hanger steak. Hanger steak, medium rare. We're going to feed you well during the mm. day. And then with your catch, we're going to feed you during, pretty dang well at night. You got it. <laughs> oh, this is the right way to do it. Oh, save one of these for Phil. Why? Good point. <laughs> he doesn't know you have it. He has no, no. clue. Mm. And he doesn't need to know. That's right. Shark, shark. So the one I had earlier was larger. Definitely bigger than this, because you fought that one. 
Oh, nice. So this was a crab. The shark, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shark doesn't do that to the crab. This is a tarpon head. That was probably a tarpon head, exactly. Whoa, we got a bite. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's not done yet. Shark. So yeah, he's a little bigger. The bites were coming with consistently epic results, but the sharks were beating the tarpon to the bait. So it was time for the Georgia blue crab to do its magic. And this time, it wasn't a shark. That is a big fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It snapped it. Get the other one. Get the other one. OK, yeah. Right under the boat. And he's taking it. Around. Cool, they had it at the same time. Continue to eat that steak sandwich. Yeah, man, that steak sandwich gave me the energy after that last. <laughs> Stingray. <laughs> a monster. Really? Unless it's the world's largest flounder. And we can do a lot of fake scallops, right? A lot of that. <laughs> See, he's got both hooks. He does, he took them both. Oh, wait. That's the culprit. Yep. He's got one. Now the tarpon filled the radar, but not the line. So while Dave and I continued our excursion, Phil and his wife met at Halyards for a little pre-dinner wine tasting in anticipation of the catch. And may I offer a toast to you, sir? Thank you so much for the opportunity. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Pinky's up. <laughs> From wine to dine, let's head upstate to the Barnsley Resort in Adairsville, Georgia, where Phil re-witnessed the skills of another great chef, Adam Hayes, who was willing to take on this week's Badia Spices Chef Challenge. <laughs> David went out, he got a great big striper, okay? Got you a bunch of Badia Spices, okay? What are you gonna need to make what you're gonna make? Well, can we use them all? You can use everything. Well, if we can use them all, I'm thinking, I'm feeling like a little mole right now. Oh, little mole. Little mo <laughs> Holy mole, <laughs> yeah. Here mole. Here I'm, we go. I'm working with you. I'm going to have a good time learning about these spices. Well, there's, there's plenty of them to look at here. Blackening redfish, Cajun, Louisiana, eucalyptus. Oh, pumpkin seeds. That's where it's at. You got to have pumpkin seeds in there. How you going to work the pumpkin seeds in? I'm just going to put them in there. All right. Like I said, it's 30, 20. How many spices we got here? I got some other stuff to add to it. Well, that's OK, because it is the Badia Spices. Chef Challenge, that's right. so the challenge is on you. You had any of these before? This one right here. No. Oh boy, right there, that's the one. That one lights you up. I think it's gonna work with this striped bass. All right, Chef, we got all the ingredients. I think it's time for us to really get busy. This is yeah. gonna be your mole now, all right. Here comes our chili, so we got the three different ones. Okay, what do we got? What you wanna do, basically, is pop the seeds out of these. I like to toast these a little ahead of time, not just rehydrate off the get-go. So this is one of the New Mexico chilies. All right, that was the uh, Wahio. The Wahio? Yeah, it's when the Wahio right. meets the Tomatillo. Oh, no. And then it's, it's all mole in oh, there, all right? Okay. That no. didn't work. That this didn't man got something going on. for me. I have no idea what was, it is I was right going now. there. All right, so now we're just toasting those a little bit. Now, this is the one right here. This is the one that I understand that will actually leave your mouth in flames. In flames. Watch how you gonna burn now. Okay, I might have to take over. All right, fine. Am I gonna have to take over? No, no I'm, I'm just kidding. giving you a, right. I'm you're giving you a right. shot. Okay, I'm good. gonna go over here and play sous chef again. Yeah, okay? All right, good, because I'm gonna need those spices now. Put that in there. Now, don't put too much. Yeah, that smells good. I That's smoky. Gonna do. So Chipotle's got that smoky flavor too. There, I didn't put that much. Now, if somebody was making the mole, they wouldn't actually have to have all this. It's it, just that's what we want to do today. We got it in front of us. We're gonna use it. Once again, if you're at home, yep. Take a shot. Put a few of these ingredients in it. Make it work. You know what? We got some sesame seeds. Got sesame, got we got that. the pumpkin seeds. All right, we're good on I that. think we got everything. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take a little of this lime juice in. Put a little acid to it. All right, here we go. We're gonna go in this little pot right here. Oh, look at that goodness. I think we're ready now I, to add the final final ingredient. The chocolate. Be. A chocolate. Let's put the chocolate in. All right, here we go. A lot of spices. Shaking around. He's going in there. You think it needs? Did we nail it first time? Oh, baby, we nailed it. Up top. We nailed it. Whoa! You got this. That's what I'm talking about, the chef challenge. And we're going to just sprinkle a little salt and pepper. I'm just going to do a quick little pan saute. That's it. All right, so I'm going to go Skin hot pan. Skin side down. Skin side down. I didn't get my pan smoking hot or anything because I got a thick fillet there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. And just basically right over the top. Just a little oil. All right, here we go. All right, we'll bring this thing over here. Lay it down right there in the mole. Nice. 
Now, like I said, I'm big on these sesame seeds, so I think oh, we'll just you really like go them. a little bit more of that sesame seed over top. Just lay that on top. And then I can't just leave it like that. I'm gonna have to go ahead and do a little fresh squeeze of the lime juice on there. Yeah, you Add that it. acid to it. You are dangerous. And I got, you know, pumpkin seeds. We'll just say a couple of pumpkin seeds. So you know what ingredients were in there. That is a thing of beauty. I think that was pretty good. I can't thank you enough. My pleasure. My man. I had fun. Chef Adam. <laughs> the Madea Spice Chef Challenge. Woo! That's it. Yeah. I tell you what. Check on that. All right. <laughs> he gonna do me like that. Just roll on out with it. It's your chill time. Let's go. Badia Spices is the soul of cooking. Established in 1967 by Jose Badia, this high quality spice company is still a family business under the leadership of Joseph Pepe Badia. Badia Spices delivers more than 350 different products, including an amazing line of organic products to 90 countries around the world. Badia Spices. The creators of the original complete seasoning, available at your local retailer. Hi, I'm John Ernst, your hometown lawyer. If you have a legal issue, give me a call. You'll reach me right here. And remember, 10% of my fee goes to the charity of your choice. If you need representation, call your hometown lawyer, John Ernst. Call 678-962-7929 or visit ernstlegal.com. He'll take care of your legal needs so you can focus on what matters. That looks like a shake, doesn't it? Look at Dave and I continued winding along miles and miles of trout, flounder, and redfish waters in search of a nice mess of fish for the final feast. We landed a couple of redfish, but we returned them to the Mars so they could replenish the stock. You see, Chef Dave believes there are many fish in the sea that you don't always see on the menu that can also make for an excellent meal. We're trying to get people to eat species they've never eaten before. You know, in the 70s, nobody ate Patagonian toothfish. And they changed the name of Chilean sea bass, and we about wore it out. Oh, wow. Grouper and snapper were, were overfishing it. A lot of other species were, were e eating so much of it, at some point we got to try other fish. If we get people to eat more and more of that type of fish, then the demand on grouper snapper is going to, of course, be less. So hopefully we don't overfish it. And speaking of catching and eating fish you didn't know you could eat, let's head to Gulf County, Florida to catch a few sail cats. And yes, these are indeed saltwater catfish. Believe it or not, you can eat, at least out of these waters. Captain Charlene Burke. About fun charters. About fun charters for St. Joe. Hardhead catfish, we just don't eat them. They're, they're muddy tasting, they just don't taste good. But the sail, the gaff pop, they are edible. We, we eat those, I eat them, my kids eat them. Um, and they're, they get big, they're fun to catch. Um, when I have a lot of kids on board, I uh, go right in that little spot where we were at and they can catch some of the biggest fish they've ever caught in their life. And some of these gaff tops are, can be five and six pounds. And a five and six pound fish on that light tackle is a handful for those kids. Hey, gaff top. Yeah? Yep. Yeah, there we gaff go. Top. Whoa, yeah, that's nice, what dude. we want. Yep, you can tell just because their uh, fin's a little bit higher. Looks like the gaff top sail from a sailboat. They're good to eat. That's the gaff top, and the, they have extended 
uh, pectoral fins, but they still have, like right there is his, where he can poke you, right there. Oh yeah. They're venomous, not poisonous. Yep. But that's, you can get a little filet off of that guy. There we go, Phil. And, and a lot of folks that have never, that say that they don't like fish, have never really tasted a saltwater fish. You know, they, most of them are mild tasting. They don't taste like fishy taste. They're really good and, it's, and they're good for you. A lot of protein. See you, buddy. Back in the Golden Isles, Captain Dave returned to Halyards where Chef Dave once again prepared a fantastic feast for the appetite. Okay, now we're gonna make a tempura batter. It's equal parts cornstarch and uh, all-purpose flour. So we're just gonna mix that together in a bowl, but it's really simple. This is something you can do at home. And this is some cold club soda. Why club soda and why cold? Well, cold because it helps keep the bubbles. And club soda, because it has bubbles. Okay. And we're gonna barely mix it together. So what is the consistency we're looking for with this? We're looking for thin and runny. A lot of people make their batter way too thick. With this sort of tempura batter, you don't want to overmix it. You can see that I'm using a spoon and not a whisk or a whip. I'm just kind of bringing it together. That's really the batter. And then we're going to take the fish, we're going to lightly season it with salt and pepper, and we're just going to put it in a very hot grease, about 375 degrees. All right, Dave, I noticed why you're filleting this. Mm -hmm. Why is there two different colors on this? You know, it's just kind of the way the beach is made. I was explaining that to Dave uh, when we caught the fish. I kind of showed him on the boat. It's just the way the animal's made. But for some reason, the bottom muscle always has a red tint to it versus the top, which has a little gray tint to it. Here's a little secret that some people kind of forget. Okay. Before you cover it up with the batter, the flour, make sure you season it. Put salt and pepper on it first. Get the excess off, and we're just going to put it right, right in the fryer, right from there. There it is. Now you say it quick. That yeah. was quick. Yeah, you just don't overcook it. I mean, when, especially when it's that fresh and you just treat it simply, don't overcook it, it gets dry. It's perfect. That is for the family feast. Oh, remember that? Which, you're right. All right. It's time for Big Phil's Family Feast. Woo woo! All right, A and A family, what a great time we had on the show this week. We want to thank this man, Chef Dave. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate it. Very well. Hey, now you may call him Chef Dave. I call him Captain Dave because Captain Dave showed me all the variety the Golden Isles has to offer. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a great day. Got to see a lot of different things and have a great time. Kim and I would also like to thank George. We got a lesson in wines today. Woohoo! We had a great time. Yes, we did. And speaking of that, grab your glasses, everybody. Throwing <laughs> <laughs> so a hook in the water is fun, but I like eating much better. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Bon appetit.